KTBS Shreveport. From KTBS Television. The Scene at 5. Your first look at the news this evening. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to The Scene at 5. Thank goodness it's Friday. I'm Al Pierce. Liz has the day off. Another good liftoff for NASA today. The shuttle Atlantis is circling the Earth on a secret mission. We'll have more. Copy machines here could be running dry pretty soon. There's a shortage of paper, and Signora Thomas will tell us why. Today on Kids' Corner, some simple things children can make for Christmas gifts, and critics Siskel and Ebert will give us a sneak preview of the new comedy, The Naked Gun. Well, for the first time in almost a month, it looks like we're going to have a Saturday without any rain or bad weather. That's good news. Me meteorologist Ed Duranzik's here with more on that, Ed. Can you believe that, Ed? No. A weekend without rain. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Sunny weekends in store for most of the area. And temperatures will be pretty good Saturday, but cooling off a little bit Sunday. We'll explain a little bit more about that later on in weather. That is great news. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Ed. Bozier attorney Graham Rogers was a heavy user of cocaine, according to coroner George McCormick. Today, Bossier District Attorney Henry Brown told Channel 3 that an autopsy and toxicology test showed that Rogers to be intoxicated at the time of his death and that there were signs that cocaine and Valium were in his urine. Last month, Rogers was fatally shot by a Bossier City police officer after he pointed a high-powered rifle at the officer. Witnesses say Rogers had been drinking and taking Valium earlier that morning. Henry Brown says while he's still waiting for a written report from the coroner, he has reviewed the case. A Shreveport man is in critical condition at the Willis Knighton Medical Center following a shooting last night. Police say 38-year-old Thurman Campbell Jr. and 37-year-old Danny Mims got into an argument at a red light at the intersection of Juella and Lakeshore. Campbell backed his truck into Mims' car. Mims then allegedly pulled a 22 caliber pistol and shot Campbell in the neck. He's in the city jail tonight, charged with attempted second-degree murder. Well, the Catholic Church in Shreveport today joined leaders from across the state in a call to stop capital punishment. Church officials say the death penalty goes against the word of the gospel. Monsignor Walter Walsh said the process of being on death row for years is inhumane and is not a deterrent to murder. Can we justify the taking of a life, the killing of a person, in order to prove to others that killing is wrong? Other speakers said minorities and the poor get the death penalty more often because they can't afford good legal representation. Similar news conferences and events were held by Catholic groups across the state this week. Well, school kids wearing jeans is no big deal, but when they do it for a good cause, well, that is a big deal. Students at St. Joseph's School in Shreveport were told that they could wear jeans today instead of their usual uniforms if they paid a quarter or more. Turns out all 376 students came to school in jeans. The $180 they raised will go to little Mark Johnson's fund. He's the child mauled by dogs in DeSoto Parish three weeks ago. And by the way, we're happy to report that Mark is now in fair condition at the LSU Medical Center. Well, if there are two things you just can't separate, it's kids and Christmas. And that's why for the next four Fridays, Jim Roberts is going to give us a series of reports from the Kids' Corner. Today, Jim looks at a few easy things kids can make for Christmas gifts. For these three and four-year-olds, Christmas and shopping still don't go together. But Christmas and giving presents do. So these kids are making gifts for their parents and grandparents. Something any kid can do with what you find around the house and maybe a little help from your older brother or sister. You'd be surprised what you can do with a baby food jar, a little glue, and some colored paper. I'm going to get this set because it's my mom and dad's present. Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun. Put a candle inside one of these and you've got a holiday decoration that looks like a stained glass window from church. Or what about an ornament for the tree? Just take a little construction paper, a plastic cup, pipe cleaner for a hanger, and some glue and glitter. Hold your bell up, Claire. Ring your bell. Or what about a centerpiece for the mantle that your mom can use every year? You can combine a trip to the woods to collect pine cones with a little work inside. Take a pine cone, get someone to paint it green, add a little glitter, and you've got a miniature tree that stays green for years. And parents, if you want to help your child make a Christmas gift, here are some hints from Jim Mars at La Petite Ecole Nursery School. Keep it simple. 
Don't attempt to do something that's too complex or difficult. Use things the child's already familiar with, like scissors and glue, construction paper, or household items. And let it be the kid's present. It may not look exactly like the picture in the crafts book or what little Johnny or Jill did next door, but in the end, that won't really matter a whole lot. If you happen to find one of these under the tree on Christmas morning, just remember one thing. A lot more than just construction paper and glue went into it. So did a lot of love from kids like these. Jim Roberts, Channel 3 News, in the Kids' Corner. And next week on the Kids' Corner, Jim will give us some tips on how to buy a Christmas gift on a kid's allowance. In the spirit of Christmas giving, local hotels and motels spent the day loading up the Salvation Army's van with furniture, lamps, dressers, mirrors, end tables, mattresses, and a lot of other living room furniture. It's all part of Holiday for the Heart. Christmas furniture drive that'll bring the comforts of home to local needy families. It's an idea initiated by the local Holiday Inn, Sheraton's, and the Monkhouse Ramada Inn. They gave these folks a real workout today. In all, they loaded up four truckloads of furniture. Now here's a first look at news from around the nation and the world. The United Nations General Assembly has voted to move its session on Palestinian issues to Geneva. That vote follows the refusal of the U.S. to grant a visa to PLO Chairman Yasser Arafat so he could address the world body. Well, Christmas came early to Cape Canaveral. The shuttle Atlantis blasted off and successfully went into orbit today. NASA has put a news blackout on the mission. The Atlantis is reportedly carrying a spy satellite to be put into orbit over the Soviet Union tomorrow. Five armed Soviet hijackers carrying $2 million surrendered peacefully in Tel Aviv's airport today. The ordeal began yesterday when four men and a woman took over a Russian school bus. No one was injured. The governor of Massachusetts today visited the man who beat him in the race for president. Michael Dukakis met with George Bush at Bush's home. He reportedly talked with the president-elect about issues including education, drugs, and health care. And still to come, we'll take a trip on the old Santa Fe Trail. But first, meteorologist Ed Duranzik has a good weekend forecast. Stay here. Boy, near 70. Good weekend for a picnic tomorrow, I guess. Tomorrow should be yeah. good. It should be excellent to get outdoors. No complaints from anybody, Great. we hope. <laughs> Sunday will be a little bit of a change, but oh. we'll get to that in just a minute. Here are the readings for the morning. 32 degrees, the official low here in Shreveport, about 36 in Texarkana. 30 degrees, El Dorado, 32 Monroe, 31 down in Alexandria, 40. The hot spot in Louisiana, New Orleans, and 40s along coastal areas of Texas. This is the way things break down as weather watchers out there are observing. 63 in Magnolia, Arkansas. That's around west temperature, as high as 64. 65 degrees in Oil City. Danny Hill had 70, he said, for his high, and 30 degrees was his early morning low. A pleasant day in Oil City. Down in Fellowship Community, 65, current reading, and the high for Bob Chevalier today. This morning's low for him, 33 degrees. Clouds in motion. Not a lot happening in the architects. We have a weak upper air low that's out in Arizona, New Mexico, kind of just spinning around and around and not really doing too much. That system may work its way across our area sometime late on Saturday, bring a few clouds in, but nothing else is really going to happen. Not anything major. High pressure from Mississippi clear across to the Rockies still dominate our weather picture, and that's the way things will be, at least for tomorrow. We'll have high pressure near us, and then we'll have a secondary front roll on down out of the plains and that will affect our weather well it'll change our temperatures drop them and also keep the air dry and clear out the skies again on sunday so not bad temperatures tonight still a little cool slightly below normal looking for mid to upper 30s throughout the area a few 40s in texas and maybe a 50 degree reading or two as you head towards brownsville now for tomorrow, wall-to-wall -to -wall sunshine, still high pressure over southeast Louisiana, southern Mississippi, bringing in southwest, the south-southwest winds in the area. And that means temperatures will ease up a little bit higher. We had about 65, 66 today here in Shreveport. Next frontal system is destined to move into the area sometime late Saturday night, early Sunday morning. And I think and then it'll bring a slight change, but no rainfall with that frontal system. Show 60s widespread, even maybe a 70 degree temperature or two, parts of Texas and northwest Louisiana. Bon appetit on this weather for tomorrow. It's going to be great. Here are the conditions for this evening. Chilling off pretty quickly. The air is rather dry and looking for a low of 45 or 45 at least this evening and then down to 37 degrees. It'll be cold and it appears 
there will be some frost also in the early morning hours. 60 degrees by noon under sunny skies. I'm going to go for at least 70, Al, so wow. it shouldn't be too bad at all. And those winds will be south-southwest at 8 to 12, sunrise 7 a.m., sunset at 5, 10 p.m. So we're breaking down to a good weekend. Tomorrow, 70, maybe about 60 or 62 for Sunday. little change, but... Uh, Get out gonna, and enjoy. Yeah, really, tomorrow. Okay, thanks, Ed. Well, since the gold rush, Americans have been hearing the echoes of that old cry, Westward Ho, that's where we're going tonight, West. Here's our travel reporter, Michelle Roth. 150 years ago, pioneers followed the Santa Fe Trail across this territory. Then, on the very same trail came the railroads, and even later, a highway known as Route 66. Back then, it seemed like everybody was headed for California. So we decided to travel the same way, by rail and car, passing through landscapes that had seen the covered wagons, something Amtrak calls the Southwest Chief. It's a 2,200-mile journey from Chicago to L.A., including stops in the heart of old cowboy and Indian country. As part of the ticket conditions, you can get off, go exploring, and catch another train the next day, or later. You'll find some great sights to visit. From Flagstaff, Arizona, it's a quick side trip to the Grand Canyon. From Gallup, New Mexico, drive to the Painted Desert or to the stony remains of 200-million-year-old trees in the petrified forest. In Albuquerque, you can shop for silver and turquoise jewelry. Then check out the trendy shops and museums of Santa Fe and Taos. The rock-bottom round-trip there between Chicago and Los Angeles is about $200. This allows for two stopovers. The price buys a seat in the coach car. That's it. You pay for your own meals in the dining car and sleep airline style in your reclining seat. Aboard the Southwest Chief, I'm Michelle Roth. If you'd like a copy of our free travel guide, just send your name and address to KTBS-TV P.O. Box 44227 in Shreveport and that zip code 71134. Coming up, we're going to take a look at the new movie, The Naked Gun, but first we'll tell you why you may be doing a whole lot of writing soon. Don't go away. <laughs> Here's news from the three-state area. Authorities are going from house to house in Brinkley, Arkansas, looking for two men wanted on charges of kidnapping, rape, and murder in Pennsylvania. Both men were spotted in Brinkley last night. Officials had blocked off all roads leading in and out of town. Richwood, Louisiana, is in the dark, literally. They owe Louisiana Power and Light nearly $20,000, so the company pulled the plug on the town. There are no street lights or no electricity to the town's city hall. The Richwood mayor says the town can't pay its bills because they're flat broke. And history's being made in a Texas courtroom. Charles Carter of Dallas made history when he was sworn in as a juror in a civil suit. He's the first deaf person in Texas history to be chosen as a juror in a state court case. Well, for most of us, it's been a quiet, kept thing, but the business world is buzzing with word of a paper shortage. That's right. Following the paper trail hasn't been easy lately. And consumer reporter Signora Thomas is here to tell us what it could mean to our pocketbooks. Well, a lot. It seems a little bit strange to be talking it about does. a paper shortage, but when it comes to copying paper, the stuff we use to Xerox duplicates of all kinds of printed material, the early effects of a shortened supply are already showing up right here in the Arklatex. The paper being cut here is fast becoming a hot item in the business world. It's millions of sheets of paper like this that are counted on daily by businesses to get the job done. Only it's getting difficult to know whether copy paper will be there when it's needed. Whereas we were getting paper in one week, it may have gone to one month. Sam Ziegler knows the paper problem all too well. As a person in the business of making copies, it was only a month ago that he found himself running short of paper. There was uh, only one source in town for readily accessible paper that was on a wholesale basis that I knew of. Everyone else seemed to be out at the time. Reasons for the shortened supply of copy paper vary, from a shortage of imported pulp to a severe lack of paper production machinery. Whatever the reason, paper supply companies are locked into a competitive paper management game. I have professional purchasing people who are spending all of their time in this, in this uh, matter. While paper supply companies are focusing their time and attention on tapping the right resources, the price of this product is escalating. For the moment, the cost of getting duplicates of insurance forms, personal documents, and so on, is relatively unchanged. 
but even that may not hold much longer. We hear rumors of paper going up again after the first of the year. Uh, you know, eventually the customer is going to have to absorb some of the costs. So if your company, church, or family is planning to complete a major project that requires lots of copies, here's a word to the wise. They should uh, buy very intelligently in advance, and they should work with reliable and established uh, paper distributors. Now, we don't want to start a paper panic, but, uh, of course, it, this just goes to show you that you can't take paper for granted anymore. No, and it's everywhere. That's true. Nationwide. Okay. Thanks, Signal. Good report. Up next, a movie that's dizzy, crazy, and wacko, and we'll talk to Catherine Healy, the star of The Nutcracker. Don't go away. <laughs> The holidays are here. Celebrate Christmas on the Red tonight as Shreveport welcomes in the Yule season. There'll be caroling, lighting of city's Christmas tree in front of the courthouse, and it all begins at 7. And over in Bossier City, there'll be a Christmas parade at 7. It'll start at Hamilton and Barksdale Boulevard and end at Pierre Bossier Mall. Bossier's tree will be lit at 8.30 at the Civic Center. Well, something else guaranteed to give you a big dose of the holiday spirit is the Christmas classic, The Nutcracker. It's being put on by the Shreveport Metropolitan Ballet. It opens tomorrow down at the Civic Center. Catherine Healy, an international known ballerina, is in town for it, and she's taken the time from rehearsal now to join us. Catherine, welcome to Shreveport. Thank you. When did you decide to pursue a career in ballet? Well, I never really made a firm decision. I saw my first ballet when I was three and a half. It was actually a film, and I liked it so much that I said to my parents, you know, I want to be like that. I saw Carla Fracci, and I said, she's just so beautiful, I have to, I have to do that. And I started taking, you know, one lesson a week, and then two, and then three, and it just gradually increased until suddenly I found myself, you know, working in a company. It was just one of those progressive things. It wasn't a, a very instant decision. Yeah, it's a lot of work, too. Now, you've even danced for Princess Margaret. How was that? That's got to be a great honor. Yes, and the Queen. Um, wow. <laughs> it was really exciting, both performances. The first one was Juliet for Princess Margaret, and then I was invited to do a command performance for the Queen about six months later. And it was really, it was a bit scary. Um, the concept, w of course, was foreign to me because we don't have royalty here, uh -huh. but it was a great honor. Um, in England, it's considered a great honor, and I was duly honored <laughs> um, by the invitation. And it was just, it, you know, the Romeo and Juliet was, by, was choreographed by Sir Frederick Ashton, and it was extraordinary to work with, you know, one of the greatest choreographers of the 20th century. I'll bet. Now, Catherine, you, people who may not have known you may not go to ballet, have seen you in a movie before. You played the daughter of Mary Tyler Moore and Dudley Moore in uh, six weeks. I, your ch I guess you played the child who died in that movie. Did that have any lasting effect on you? Well, in the sense that I hadn't really acted before, um, yes, it, w it decidedly, I think, improved my acting because I suddenly have to, had to concentrate on it. It was the first professional dancing I did as well, you know, on point in a grown-up role in terms of ballet rather than a little girl role. And so in that sense, it, it really improved my dancing as well. Well, Catherine Healy, we appreciate you being here. You're great. People need to get out and see you. Oh, well, thank you. Okay. I hope you have a nice holiday. Thank you. Once again, the Nutcracker down at the Civic Center this weekend. For tickets, call 865-8242 or 865-7487. Need a good laugh? Well, critics Siskel and Ebert say, go see the new movie, The Naked Gun. It's one that'll have you in stitches.